Let's do a little warm-up now before moving to the central topic of today's lecture on how to apply these uh, transition probabilities in order to calculate some more interesting path behaviors of uh, Markov chains. So suppose that you are given the following Markov chain and you are asked to calculate the probability that uh, starting in state 1 you go successively in state 2 then state 6 and then 7. So this is really what we are asked here. You start at 1 then you go to 2, 6 and 7. So how to calculate such a probability? Well we can use a version of the multiplicative rule that we have introduced before. Right? And so what, what is the specific uh, format of that rule that I'm going to use here is uh, you have three events like that B, C, D. They are conditioned on A and I will say that this is the probability of B given A times the probability of C given A intersection B times the probability of D given A intersection B intersection C. So this is a version of the multiplicative rule. Right? And um, this is what I'm going to use here. So let's do it. This is going to be equals to the probability that x1 equals 2 given x0 equals 1 times the probability that x2 equals 6 given x0 equals 1 and x1 equals 2 times the probability that uh, x3 equals 7 times x0 equals 1, x1 equals 2, and then x2 equals 6. Right? So multiplication rule. Now here this is P12. Right? And here uh, we are using the Markov property. What it says here is what is the probability that I will be in state 6 given that I was in 1 and then 2. And we know that having the entire trajectory doesn't matter, uh, it's just the last step, so it's essentially times this one is P26. And for the same reason this one is nothing else than P67. The important message here is that to find the probability of a specific trajectory like this one, you just need to multiply the transition probabilities that you find along the trajectory. Right? So this is what we have here. Now suppose that you want to find the probability that in four time steps you find yourself in a specific state, say 7, given that you started in a specific initial state, say 2. Right? So this is really what we want here. You're here and then you end up here after four steps. So how do you calculate that? Well, one way is to use our recurrence formula for our IJ that we have uh, described before. Another, for small examples like this one, when the number of time steps in the future is small, in that case 4, one can perhaps use a brute force calculation. So what is a brute force calculation? Well, you try to enumerate all possible trajectories and then you sum all their probabilities. So in that case, I think we have three trajectories, but I'm not so sure, so let's try to enumerate them. So one possibility, so you start here, and one possibility in one step transition is to go to 6, right? then from 6 you go to 7, then from 7 you go back to 6, and then from 6 you again go to 7. So that, if we look and use the rule that we have developed before, it would be the probability of going to 6 times P67 times P76 and times P67. So this is one way of doing it. Um, what would be another path? Well, from 2, you could, instead of going to 6, you could go to 1 in one transition, then you go back to 2, then we go to 6, and then right up to 7. So essentially here what we have is plus P21 times P12 times P26 times P67. 
six, seven. And what is the third way to do that? So there is a third path. If you're starting from here, yes, you go here in one step. Here you do a jump on itself, one step, and never jump. And then you go to seven. So in that case, you would have plus p two six times p six six times p six six times p six seven. So here we have the anti solution, right? So this is what is called by brute force. Now, of course, if instead of 4 here, you had something like 200, right? the number of trajectories would grow exponentially with this number of steps. And this is not practical anymore. Using the recursion formula would have been a much better approach. And in some sense would have a much better complexity essentially a linear growth as a function of time steps in the future. More precisely, uh, for a chain with a state space of m, at each time steps you need to update all our ij's, so for each pair of ij's, so each updates would take about m square, and uh, so the total computational complexity would grow about n times m square as a function of n.